Hi, welcome to another session of the Potter's Roundtable from Washington Street Studios in the floodplain of the, of, the, of the Shenandoah and Potomac Rivers. I'm Phil Bernberg, and today's topic is functional teapot design. This topic was actually suggested to us by one of our YouTube viewers, and we're gonna be talking about how do you basically make a functional teapot? Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. Okay, functional teapot design. Let's talk about basically the components of a teapot. So we have a diagram here that shows the, the basic components. And so what we're talking about is the body with the foot and the, the, the lid and the handle and the spout and possibly with a strainer. We'll be talking about these um, in a little bit location. Now one of, the, one of the other features of the basic design of a teapot is the type and location of the handle. And so we have several different, there are three different sort of main locations that you can position a handle. You can have, a, you can have a, a top arching handle like this over the top of the handle. You can have a handle on the back of the body like this, or you can have sort of a side mounted post type handle. This is just another example of with a handle pointing down, but it's basically, it's the same, it's the, it's the, the handle behind the, behind the back loop basically. And we can, one of the things we can talk about also is, and we will be talking about this, is sort of the different attributes of a teapot. What, is, what can a teapot do, or what are, the, what are the functions of a teapot? Well, one of the first things is, and I'm just gonna list them and then we'll talk about them, would be the purpose of the teapot, which sounds strange, but as you'll see, not all teapots are meant to be functional. And then there's also the basic design or appearance of a teapot, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about some, some actual design principles, not in great depth, but there are a few that I think really apply to teapots that just makes a better looking as well as functioning teapot. And then there's also the issue of cleaning of the teapot. There's the issue of how easy it is to lift and, and handle the teapot. And finally, the really important thing is how well does it pour? Well, if we go back, if we go back and talk about the purpose, if you wanna call it the purpose of a teapot, you can have anything from a functional teapot, such as this one here, even though it's, it's well, but it has all the basic requirements to be a well-functioning teapot. And then the other extreme is what I call whimsical teapots, which might look something like this. By the way, these are all illustrations taken from the book called 500 Teapots. And so this is, this is what I'm gonna call whimsical, not exactly a practical teapot, but for a long time, actually, a teapot has sort of been a vehicle for potters to experiment with designing, creating their old designs for teapots. And they could be all the way from, on one extreme, from a very functional teapot to essentially a non-functional, more sculptural teapot, and everything in between. We're gonna be focusing in this discussion really on, on the more functional designs, but just not to exclude the fact that there are, there are creations such as this which are still considered uh, or called teapots. Okay, and if we, not, if we talk about the design of a teapot now, and we're gonna, bringing in some actual sort of, sort of classical design principles, one of the first things you want, I think with any good even work of art, including teapots, is you want what's called harmony or unity of the pots. In other words, you want, you want all the parts of the teapot to sort of you know, merge together and look, look, you know, look well, look good together. Um, so for example, one of, the, one of the details might be, you'd like to have the lines of attachment of the handle directed into, so that it directs your eye into the volume of the teapot um, and, and not, it's not out of the teapot. So this is a good, ex good example of where, when you look at the teapot, and your eye notices the, the curvature of the handle, it tends to bring your eye back into the teapot, not off the teapot. And so, for example, one thing, you pro one thing would, would not be, again, this is sort of more classical design principles, but I wouldn't necessarily want a teapot where let's say this is the handle and I've got a spout here, where the handle might look something like this. This is exaggerated. But because that, that sort of, then when you look at this, it, when you look at this, it's separate from the teapot. And you really, because the teapot has all these components, for a good visual appearance, you really want all the pots, all the parts to sort of blend together and fit together so you don't focus on one particular part. So in this case, it's kind of hard to decide which to look at. Are you looking at the handle or are you looking at the body? So this design, at least in terms of design principles, doesn't really bring your eye back into the teapot. It stands separate. 
And, um, and the other, th the other another feature of a teapot, which makes makes for a good appearance, is is have the since you have these other appendages on the teapot, the handle and the spout, is design it so that the the lines or the curves on the spout and the handle basically continue or fit in with the lines that are already on the pot. And this is a good example. So that the, the curvature and the curves on the line on the spout are a continuation of the lines on the body and the handle the same way is sort of mirroring so that the curves, so, so when you look at this teapot, you don't particularly focus on the handle or the spout on the teapot or the body. You see the whole teapot in, a, in sort of a, in a more uniform way. And, and so for, for again, what you wouldn't want to do is I wouldn't want to necessarily, again, following sort of good classical design principles, I wouldn't necessarily want, let's say, a teapot body that looks like this with a handle that looks like that. Because the line, there's no, there's no sort of connection between the lines of the handle or no continuation and the lines of the, this sort of rectangular body and this smooth rounded handle. They really don't, they really don't connect. One doesn't lead you into the other. I guess another, another, um, another important point, and we're, we're talking basically at this point about sort of the appearance of the teapot and, the, and we're continuing with the design, is that you really also, you want, since this is going to be a functional teapot, you want the, you want the pot to look functional. So you want the handles to look like they're, they're strong and, they're, and the attachment points for the handle are strong. So in this example here, for instance, we've got the handle, the, 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 the thickness of the handle looks thick enough adequate to handle what you can imagine would be the weight of the teapot, and there are very strong and prominent attachment points. So again, it doesn't look fragile. It doesn't look as if, you know, you'd be, I'd be afraid to pick it up because the handle's gonna fall off, okay? And also, as part of this, you also want the, the, the teapot to look, to look stable enough. And so again, with this teapot here, you know, it doesn't look like it's gonna tip over. It, it, when you look at it, you can see that it's meant to be a functional teapot. Okay, so then uh, I mentioned, you know, we were talking about the sort of the attributes of a teapot, and we talked about a little bit about, um, we mentioned about the purpose and the design or appearance. Another factor that we had on sort of on the list there is ease of cleaning. It's important if this is gonna be functional that it's easy to clean the inside of the teapot. So you want a large enough opening, a filling opening for the teapot that's easy to fill the teapot, and you also want the, the opening to be in a position where it's not blocked by the handle. So if I have, if I have one of the, the top mounted arch handles, and let's say this is just the body of the teapot, and this is where our opening is gonna be, I don't want the handle so low arching over it that I can't reach in there and easily remove the lid. I wanna be able to, I wanna have access to the inside. And I also wanna avoid undercuts. Again, I'm thinking of cleaning. I wanna avoid on the inside of the body, if this is, if this is again, my teapot, the body of the teapot, I want to avoid some kind of ridges or sharp undercuts or something un under the lip here that would be difficult to reach to clean because I, I can't necessarily reach inside and get under there. So I want to be able to reach inside and clean the whole interior really well. I also, it's also important to be able to just make it easy to remove the lid for cleaning. If I have some kind of a catch or a lug system, I want to be able to get it off easily, have it function well so that I can get to the inside to clean it. And now if we talk about lifting, and, and the, another function we talked about was the ease of lifting and the ease of handling of the teapot. The handle design and the placement are important. As I mentioned earlier, we want the handle thick enough for a good grip so that, again, when the teapot is full of, of liquid, I can actually, I can hold the teapot adequately by the handle. And I have my, not feel like the handle is gonna slide through my hand. And the, 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 the type of handle, whether it's the, the top arch or the back strap or the side post, the, 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 the selection of the type of handle is really important to balance the weight of the teapot. So for instance, I probably wouldn't want to put a side post handle on a very large teapot because that would be very awkward to hold the weight, okay? And I also, uh, in terms of the, the type of handle, I also wouldn't necessarily want to do a handle like this, let's say again, this is the body of my teapot, with a really high arching handle, and you may have seen some teapots like that, and then this is the lid, and the problem is, that's my spout, is that I can, I can carry it like a bucket with the handle 
support the weight, but how do I pour this? I'd have to slide my hand down the side, and then I still probably might need a second hand, because this is not really a very comfortable position to be balancing the weight of the teapot while I'm pouring it. So this would be great for carrying the teapot, but not necessarily for pouring. So I'd probably, I'd have, I'd have to slide my hand down the handle, and I might even have to support the body of the teapot with a second hand in order to do the pouring. So this is, this is maybe a nice design, but I'm not sure that it, it, it really functioned really well for, for, for lifting as well as handling and pouring the tea. Another, another consideration also is you don't, is, is even just the size of the, for lifting and handling, is the size of the teapot. There's a limit to the weight, when you think about it, with the, with the tea in it, that's gonna be practical to handle. So there's, there's sort of an upper limit, a practical limit on how large you can just make the teapot. And finally, as far as pouring, is that you also don't want, if you have some kind of an elaborate knob or handle on the top of the lid, you don't want that, hand, that knob or the handle to get in the way of your hand when you're, pour, of you're pouring, the grip on the pot. So it's kind of the opposite of what we talked about before. Yes, I want to be able to remove the lid, but I also don't want the lid getting in the way of my hand when I'm pouring. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pouring now, which is really what we're concerned about if we're talking about a functional teapot. For pouring, I want, I want a, first of all, I want a, a low, generally a low, stable lid that is not gonna fall out when I tip the teapot. It, it, again, it makes it a little more awkward, if possible, if I don't have to put another finger on the lid to hold the lid while I'm pouring the teapot. If I can either use the second hand to cradle the teapot, but not specifically to hold the lid in. So a low, low sitting lid is a nice advantage because it's less likely to sort of plop out while I'm pouring. And the requirements for pouring, when you think about it, is I need to be able to aim the stream of the pot, of, of the, where the pouring is going to go. And I'd really like a smooth, continuous flow of the tea without gurgling or without surging or chugging, where sometimes you've seen it where you pour it and it kind of goes glug, glug, glug. I'd really like to avoid that because, again, it makes it more difficult to control the stream and, and control where I'm pouring it. I'd also like a reasonable flow rate, not too fast and not too slow. And finally, at the end of the pour, I, want to, I, want, I don't want to have any dripping or running. So I want the pour to be cut off. When, when I'm finally finished with the pour, I want it to just cut the, the stream um, cleanly. So when you think about it, the spout really is, is what's directing the flow. And the spout can be tapered or it can be tube-like. And so I, I, can, I can have, first of all, I can have a spout that looks like the following illustration. Now this is, this is basically, it's just a tube, but it happens to be curved. And this is gonna, this is gonna, um, this is gonna pour fairly quickly. This is gonna be a fairly faster flow, uh, fast flow in a pot. The other alternative, whether it's, it's still basically just a straight shape whether, or a curve, it, it doesn't have a change in thickness. The other alternative are, is where you have like a doubly curved spout, such as this one here. Um, and this one, or the next design, again, another example of doubly curved, this is gonna pour more slowly. So I can think about when I'm designing the teapot, and we'll talk about this in a minute with the rest of the, let's say the body, is how do I want the teapot to pour? Do I, do I want it to pour more rapidly, in which case I'd use a straight or a single curved spout, or if I want to be able to control a little bit more, I could use a double curved spout like this. Spout placement. The placement of the spout is important. I don't want the. I, I don't want. I don't want it so low on the body 
that, the, that, that I want the tip to be above the maximum level. And I think we have an illustration of that, is that I wanna make sure that if this is the T level in the pot, that the end of the spout is above the maximum T level so that basically the spout doesn't just sit there and drain the teapot while the teapot is sitting. So I wanna make sure that the spout goes high enough above what I anticipate to be the, le the maximum fill level in the teapot. Another feature that is a good feature in terms of a, a well-pouring teapot is a good, a gradual transition from the body to the base of the spout, or what's called the throat of the spout. And this is a good example of one where I've got, an, I've, I've got a transition from, from the, 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 the volume of the body down to the final diameter of the end of the spout. And then we have another example of that also, Slightly different, but again, showing the taper. This might be, you might call this the throat, and it acts sort of like a funnel to direct the flow into the final dimensions of the spout. And the reason why this is important is because if the liquid is constricted too rapidly, if, you, if it goes from the body to a, 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 all of a sudden a, na a very narrow spout, this creates turbulence in the liquid. In other words, the liquid sort of starts moving around and, because it can't flow smoothly into the spout. And what happens is this is one of the things that causes the chugging or the gurgling when you're pouring it. If, it, if this rapid transition from the, the body of the, the teapot um, to, the, to the spout. <laughs> now one, another, another feature that I think is important to talk about, and I've alluded to it indirectly, is that, and a lot of times people don't talk about it, is the shape of the body also has an influence on how well the teapot pours. Because if you think about it, if I have an angular body, let's say a rectangular or, or a body that's shaped like a cube, when I start tilting the, the teapot to pour, the liquid has to change shape because the part, let's say, that was in a corner now has to go into the middle. And so the liquid starts moving around, so I get turbulence inside the liquid. And so that, and now when it's starting to head toward the spout, again, that turbulence that's created by the, the shape of the body can create this chugging or glugging or, or, or problems with, with the spout. So it's something to think about is, is matching the, the shape of the spout with the body. So, for instance, an angular, as I mentioned, an angular body is going to create some turbulence and mixing and mixing of the liquid during pouring. So it might be a good idea then to put one of the double curved spouts or some kind of a spout on that teapot that's going to slow down the, 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 um, the, the rate of pouring so that the liquid has a chance, the flow has a chance to smooth out before it exits the spout. Whereas if I have a round, a sort of a globular, a globe-shaped tea body, if you think about it, when I rotate the pot, the liquid doesn't have to change shape at all. It just kind of slides around on the inside of the pot. So in that case, if I, if I have a, it, so the liquid, there's, there's not as much turbulence created in the tea, so I, I can have a shorter spout and I can have a straighter spout where I don't have to worry about constricting or controlling the flow as much because the liquid is gonna more easily slide around and just move toward the spout. And finally, uh, as far as pouring, the end of the spout needs to be a, basically needs to be a sharp cut lip. And this, what this means is, especially, is that when you're at the end of the pour, you want the spout to cut the liquid. So if this is, if this is the end of my body and this is a spout, I want, especially, I want this, and I'm gonna draw, the, let's say, draw, I wanna make sure I wanna draw both walls of the pot here. This, this part right here is the last part that the T is going to go over. And I want that to be a sharp line so that when the, and if I blow that up, so that when the T is flowing over it, when I, when I bring it back, this point right here cuts the, cuts the fluid cleanly so that this part then flows back and that part flows out and it doesn't continue to sort of roll over the lip. So I want a sharp cut, especially on the bottom, on that bottom edge of the inside, so that when the tea flows over, it cuts the flow sharply as I tilt the pot back. And I also, I also may want to make sure that the spout is pointed up, so that I don't get this happen. So that if the tea, if the the, the tea will continue to sort of roll out of the lip, pointed down. I want to make sure that the spout is pointed up, in addition to having that cut on the end. I guess the last feature I wanted to mention was, is the, the idea of a perforated strainer at the base of the, of the spout 
Not all teapots have this, but this was original. The int original intention was to catch if you had if you were brewing with loose tea leaves in the in the teapot, this would catch as a strainer and catch them. So if I have a if I have a teapot body, and what you would typically, when you're assembling the teapot, what you would do is normally, you know, you'd drill the holes in the wall, you'd, you'd make the holes in the wall of the teapot for the strainer, and then you'd put, and then you'd join the, the, um, the spout over it. So the spout would be mounted over, over where the holes were to create the strainer. And there's, you have a choice though, is if you leave the strainer so that it's convex out, in other words, so it's curved like this, it's going to be, if, you're, if you are brewing with tea, bit, tea leaves, especially if they're large, it's going to be more apt to plug with the tea leaves than if you, at that before you drill the holes or afterwards, if you push it in so that it ends up sort of rounded like that and then have the holes in it, this is more, this is more when you pour, it's more, the, the remaining liquid is more apt to wash the tea leaves off it rather than, than just accumulate on it. It still will do the same function, but it, it works a little better in terms of being sort of self-clearing when you're pouring, if you have large tea, tea leaves that are, apt, that are apt to do it. The other thing that the strainer can do, which is a nice feature, is that if you still have a problem, or if, if the tea pot would tend to have a problem with chugging or gurgling or an uncontrolled flow, the strainer, again, tends to regulate the flow a little bit. So if you had a problem with surging, or if, if you had a, 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 a bo the body of the teapot was creating this mixing or turbulence of the tea, this tends to restrict it and content also tends to give you more control of the flow. Okay, well we hope this discussion today has been useful. And we know that this is a lot of information in a short period of time, so if you'd like to hear it again, you can listen to a podcast version of this presentation. Just search for the Potter's Roundtable on your favorite podcast platform. Also, if you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and other potters. This helps our videos get found on YouTube. Also, finally, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We really want to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to help us, please consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. Thank you for joining us today. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on the Potter's Roundtable.